So I was uh, doodling, you know, warming up in Blender before recording an actual tutorial for you guys. And at some point I just had this really cool result, sort of by accident. And I thought like, well, that's pretty cool. Maybe it's not like full length tutorial cool, but definitely a short video with tips and tricks on how to achieve this smoky trail effect with some particles flying around and being affected by velocity of our particle emitter. So if we go real fast, then they get shoot past the emitter itself. And if we go slowly, then they just sort of take the curves smoothly. So as you can probably guess, it's a, a particle effect. So I think this content may be for more advanced Blender users, because we won't go step by step, click by click over how to achieve this effect. But if you already watched some of my videos, then you should have the knowledge to follow along. And if you didn't, then I recommend you do so, because you're missing out. So as you could probably guess, it's just a couple of particle effects stacked on top of each other. So let's start with the base one, which is the cloud. And maybe also let's turn off this giant black plane in the background. So first of all, obviously the scene has turned off gravity so that the particles don't fall down. And the cloud is actually just a meta ball particles. But what's cool about it is the shader work, I think. And that's what gives it this sort of volumetric cloud effect. So if we open the shade editor, we can see that I actually take texture coordinates from object and because it's meta balls, so I'm not sure how it works under the hood, but if you take a look at the noise texture, for example, and then you just duplicate the meta balls, you can see that the noise is not being generated by object, but it's rather a global noise that's being sort of stamped on top of the meta balls and they all act like one organism. So because of this really cool characteristics of meta ball, I just took a really low scale noise texture and then warped the texture coordinates with it. And then using that warped texture coordinates, I just used another noise texture also with low scale, but then I animated the seed value to make it more interesting because moving objects are always more interesting. And the result is this cloudy, very, very soft gradient look. Another thing is the edges of the meta ball organism. So as you can see, I just used the Fresnel node and then overlaid some noise on top of that just to break down the edge a little bit and then subtracted that from the original noise in order to get this much softer and also broken down because of this noise texture edge around the whole meta ball. And this with of course alpha blend mode gives me this really really soft cloudy looking thing. And also I keep the emission quite low because if you go too high then it starts to look more like a solid and that just ruins the whole effect. One is perfect I think. In the particle settings there is nothing really uh, special, maybe except the integration in physics tab, it, the time step is set on quite low number just so that the particles actually stick together because if you go too high then they just fly away and that looks more like, I don't know, water driplets and totally not like what I was going for. So just keep it keep it quite low and then they stay sort of consistent. Then the second part of this effect is of course those little particles that are inside. Those are basically three versions of the same particle with different colors and slightly different settings. The only thing worth mentioning that may not be that obvious is the object velocity in the velocity tab. This causes the particles to just fly past the object if you're moving fast, basically giving it the velocity of the particle emitter. So maybe keep that in mind if you want your particles to just, you know, fly in the direction of the emitter. But also if you set it to a negative number, then your particles will be shot behind relatively to the direction of the emitter. So you can see if I move, it's being shot backwards, sort of like a jet engine on a rocket or something. But here, the most interesting part is I think the particle itself. So if I select that, you can see that this is just a bunch of planes that that mimic a uh, three-dimensional uh, mesh. And the way to make them was actually a bit tricky, or maybe not tricky, but not very obvious to me at first. So I'll go over this right now. So the first interesting part about this shader is uh, this section, which I borrowed from CG Matter. The video was called why RGB curves are the best or something like that, which basically allows you to create a gradient curve right here in the RGB curves tab, sort of like visually, uh, instead of doing the actual math. But as you can see, this is just a one quarter of the shape so in order to uh, mirror it if you just plug it from object then it does the job for you but the problem 
starts when you go into the edit mode and then you want to duplicate this and just rotate it on the z-axis like so so that you have this nice shape right and so when you rotate this from one side you can see the shape appearing correctly and from the other it's all messed up and that's basically because the texture coordinate is being taken from object and it treats all of those planes as one object and that is exactly the reason why it doesn't work so instead i keep it plugged from uvs and i have this one quarter and then i just go into the uv editor and as you can see it occupies the whole UV 0 to 1 space. First I scale this whole plane by two so we can actually fit this whole shape in on our plane but as you can see right now it's all centered and we have to offset it by 0 0.5 on x and y axis so just g minus 0 0.5 and then g y minus 0 0.5 as well and that will offset it by half so now as you remember we had this right top corner of a texture on our uv 0 to 1 space and it's still here but right now we also have the mirrored versions on the bottom and on the left i hope that makes sense if not then please check out that cg matter video he explains that way way better so i'll save you listening to my broken english explanation so let's go back to the shader editor so now we have the shader already and if you go to the edit mode and then duplicate that on the z-axis by 30 degree you can see that on each side this shape looks fine i mean you can see some problems here but that's basically because we don't have uh, alpha blend turned on because we are previewing the subtract node right now now the last thing about this shader is that blinking effect i think it adds a little bit more of interest into the particles that were already spawned so they don't just you know stick around and then die slowly but also they they blink sort of so the way i achieved that was by using a math node with the pink ping pong function and here the scale controls how fast those blinking occurs so like 0.1 is like a stroboscope effect and a one would be much slower and then the value i offset by the object info random so that each of the particle have slightly different phase of blinking so that they don't look too uniform because then it just looks weird and boring and also small tip for anyone who didn't know that yet uh if right now i choose the object with the particle systems and i try to move it around the viewport you can see that the particles actually do not spawn while they are selected and in order to be able to just move the particle effect around and uh, make it spawn the, the particles along the way is by adding an empty object as you can see i have this empty right in the middle of the effect and then in the particle emitter i added a object constraint the object constraint is child of and i selected the target to be the empty so that wherever the position of the empty is the position of the emitter will be as well but without affecting uh, the spawning particle in real time if you want to play with it in a editor because if you just uh, render the animation everything should look fine either way but just if you want to play in the viewport then that's the way to do it and so that would conclude the whole video i know this format was a little bit um choppy and i wasn't going into much detail but also i think all those things i touched in more or less detail in my previous video so if you follow it then you should not have problem understanding what's happening here but if you do then let me know in the comments maybe i will do a full length uh, tutorial on this effect if it's something you're interested in and if you're a slightly more advanced blender user then let me know if this form of condensed straight to the point uh, type of videos is more interesting for you or you prefer the longer format as well so as always the comments are for you and if anyone wants to download this scene i will probably upload it on my gumroad as well you can find the link in the description so have fun with it and see you in the next probably full length step-by-step -step tutorial video bye bye